I was talking to Justin just for a moment today, and I said, well, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to talk to my son and give him a few while to decide this and decide that. And he said, well, stay in tune with the Holy Companions. <laughs> I think he knew that your ego when you get home is, you know, he said, so stay in contact. And I thought that was such good advice because... I think that you get apart from this and all of a sudden your ego kicks in. Jesus says, two, two is better than one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two more yeah. yeah, very good. I mean, I, I do feel like that's, that's a big part of it. That's, that's kind of where Naho and I went with our conversation today was at the end, like, it's like let's just join together and, and Stay in contact with those decisions, whatever they may be. She said, can I have your cell phone? I said, yeah, I've got I said, two different Verizon and AT&T out in the canyons. And, this and, this. and I said, I'll give you both. So she gave me her email address and I just went on and just put the thumbs. And that was just our little symbol of stay in contact. And what did you say? Something, I'll only call you when it's really important. <laughs> yeah. But it's but that's the same thing. It's the mighty companions. It's joining together. And it's nice with with our group because if you call and and you can't get through to someone or whatever, that's there's different ways. We use text and Skype and phones and all, emails and all kinds of different things and things. Messages get through and there's just that symbol of connecting on things and being reassured. You know. Mm. It's okay. It's all. It's working out well. It's gonna, gonna come out great. You know. It's good to hear those messages. That's what the mighty companions are for. For encouragement. For support. You know. That's what we were talking about today. You know. When Jeff was saying, you know, it's great to have the glimpse. And then we talked about and Andy said in the sponsor, you know, and the support. That's a that's a real one-two punch, <laughs> so to speak. For you know, to the ego that having that glimpse and really feeling the experience of that joy and that freedom and peace and then having that ongoing contact point you can contact with. I mean that's, I think that's behind why people have congregations, even churches, they, they do it for the inspiration. It's not just going for one day a week, you know, they want to be inspired by the message, they want to be inspired by all those holy encounters. Jeff? David, uh, where two or more are gathered, the Holy Spirit is nothing more than my own right mind. Um, Jesus is with me all the time. There certainly seems to be a bunch of angels around. I ask where they are. They say right here. Advaita says there is no we. There's just oneness. But it seems like there is a we. Big time. What do you say about that? Well, I I would agree in the sense that Veda is not two and and the the experience is that of just this perfect oneness and nothing but this oneness. Is uh, there a we though? I mean because that's what I get to, perfect oneness. They're all right here where I am. Yeah. It, there is no where, but there is a we. But it seems, I would say that that's just, these are these, these words of comfort and blessing and direction reaching the mind in what seems to be pluralism or multiplicity. Um, and that's where the, I would say that's what the comfort is that's where two or more are gathered. I am there is coming in, and and I think the experience itself is just this expansive vastness. Where even when people have near death experiences and they they can hardly even describe the words, but it's just this sense of oneness and unity and total connection, and very much like the quantum field. There's really in the quantum field it's just energy, so there's no plural energy or we energy or anything like that. It's just everything's unified. That's what the quantum field's about. So I think it's just what what 
words are comforting, you know, it's, um, that's certainly you can find a lot of the we's in the, the Course. Even in the most basic teachings, like in the workbook, where he says, we say, God is, and then we cease to speak. That's like using the most basic teaching of truth that there is. God is. Simply, God is. We say God is, and then we cease to speak. Uh, I think that's what the language of the Course even comes through, is, you know, the Ark of Peace is entered two by two. I mean, you could find references all through that book to, to that. Um, even when he's describing holy relationship, which he says is your way, this is the, your way to reach heaven, in the I Need Do Nothing section. He even, in that section, he even says, you know, that he says that, that your way will be different. A holy relationship is given you. And then he defines holy relationship as this, this way. He says, you and your brother are together. So, even in the most basic way, he's saying, he's describing this togetherness with the you and your brother. Now, I have had people, like my friend Janie, who I described earlier there, where she read the Course, I think, for years, and then all of a sudden, she just, every time she would see a you and your brother kind of phrase in there, fwink, it would go in her mind to this, just experience of this oneness. Like, it would almost like automatically convert to fwink, this joyful oneness feeling. And I think that's really how this is working for us, it's very practical, and then we, we just go, wow, so vast, so totally connected, and, and so one. And I do like those phrases that really imply the oneness, like I like the one, mind reaches to itself, it does not go out. It's, it is all-encompassing, you within it, and it within you. You know, you, you read a statement like that and it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, because we're not used to this kind of sentences. Where does it say, um, God did not wish to be alone? Is that the Bible or the Course or, you know, that, and what does it mean? Yeah, the, there is a line um, in the Course that kind of implies that. I think it's something to the effect of, God is lonely without you. And again, that's a metaphor because of course God is not lonely. <laughs> so you know, it's like, it's that thing of we're not going to anthropomorphize and project loneliness onto God. So if, if God is lonely without you and God is never lonely, how do you read God is lonely without you? It's, God is not without you. <laughs> That's impossible, God. God could never be without you. You know, you are are one with God. You are the very core of of that essence and that spirit. So, to me, that's one of those phrases that when you first read it, sometimes people coming from Christianity can go, "Oh, he needs me." <laughs> you know, no, God isn't really needy either. <laughs> you know? But that's where the, the, it's the human interpretation of the, of the phrase. Then when you get into the high state of mind, it's like, oh, and God is not without me. You know, God, I am with God, yeah. Can God clone himself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in one sense, that's exactly what creation is. It's God cloning God. Right. So, and so you're all in the same place. Yeah. So that, there's the, how many angels can dance on the head of a tent? <laughs> that's it. Christ is a God clone. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a nice quote. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Imagine that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Christ, Christ is a God clone. <laughs> Using clone in a very lovely way. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think that's exactly it. That's, that's creation. Yeah. Cloned in the, in the so same spirit. He, God can be a we, uh, if you cut all his clones. <laughs> well, it's spirit, so, yeah, it's, but spirit doesn't really multiply and divide, it's, it just extends.
shines, radiates. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.